Let us begin our worship by singing to the Lord's praise in hymn number 42. Hymn number 42, Awake my soul and with the sun. services next week, Gaelic will be at 10.30 and the English 11.30. If anyone wishes to become a communicant member can speak to me or one of the elders and if anybody requires baptism if they could speak to me or one of the elders as well. Sanctuary is open on Thursdays between 12 noon and 2 p.m. The August food, food bank raised 135 meals. The services can be viewed on YouTube, and if you so wish, then please do. We pray for all who are ill and who need um, visitation, so we pray for each one who requires um, a visit. Um, the Open Doors Day is also today, the 20th, at between 1 and 4 p.m., the Life and Work, if anybody wishes to order it, they can speak to Mrs. Anna McDonald, the Elder, and also for the cross speech order for the Christmas catalogue as well. Um, if you're um, willing to, or would like to take part in the door duties and uplifting the offering, bring in the bell or join the team of readers, or indeed join the team of guides for the open days on Thursday, or even today, you can speak to the session clerk. She'd be delighted to put your name down to assist in any way. So may God bless these intimation students.
Today's first reading is taken from Matthew chapter 14, that's verses 1 to 12 on page 981 of our Pew Bible. If you listen for the word of the Lord. At that time, Herod the Terror heard the reports about Jesus, and he said to his attendants, This is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead. That is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Now Herod had arrested John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John had said, saying to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Herod wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of the people because they considered him a prophet. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced for them and pleased Herod so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he ordered that her request be granted and had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother. John's disciples came and took his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. Amen. Let us draw near to God in prayer. Eternal and ever merciful God, we come before you on another uh, Sunday to worship your holy name that is worthy of praise, of honour, and we acknowledge that we are poor, needy sinners. 
in need of a wonderful Saviour that was born in Bethlehem, who is Christ the Lord. Come and visit us today to touch our hearts and our lives by the power of the Spirit, enlighten our minds in the knowledge of Christ, and renew our wills and bless us and keep us in the paths of righteousness, even for your own name's sake. For the Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not want. And we thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us today in providence and in grace. Bless those that are ill, take care of them, protect them and watch over them. Bless our refugees who are struggling to find safety and rest. Be near to each one of them, we pray. Keep them safe as they are fleeing from harem. And uh, we pray that God will intervene in these things. Bless our children. Sunday school, we pray that God will bless them and the children in our churches, that God would be near to each one of them, that they may grow up to prosper in life, and uh, may God bless the work that those who are teaching them in Sunday school today and every day, that God would bless them and watch over them, we pray. We thank you for uh, the blessings that uh, of health and strength and we don't appreciate what we have until it's taken away. So we thank you for this service today and we ask you to come among us with blessing from heaven, anointing us from on high as we pray together, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing now hymn number 36, The Lord is King, lift up thy voice.
The second reading this morning is a continuation of the first reading from the book of Matthew, chapters 14, verses 13 to 21. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go and get to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, beside women and children. May God bless this reading from his word. Amen. Thanks very much to Mr. George Barry and Mr. Bill Bryce for our readings today. Let us now believe to the offering. to accept these gifts and to bless them and utilize them for the, your name in the world. So accept them, we pray, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing now to the praise of our Lord in hymn number 445. Hymn number 445, Make me a captive Lord.
Let us turn now to Matthew's uh, Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 12. John's disciples came and took his body and buried it. And then they went and told Jesus. John the Baptist had a life of prophecies. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 to 5, you find the prophecy spoken with regarding to this great man, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, and every mountain and hill made low, and the rough ground shall become level, and the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass, and the grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of God stands forever. Along with that, the ancients announced his birth. He was set apart as a Nazarite, and he lives most of his life in the desert. This was the one who identified Jesus as the Messiah and to bore witness to the Christ. This is the one who exalted Christ and the one who baptized Christ. This was a man who had doubts, but the Lord understood. He was identified as some people thought he was Elijah. There was great public reactions to his testimony. There was reproof to Herod for his adultery. He was imprisoned by Herod for his safety and then beheaded by Herod, well, at Herod's command. He's described as a man who was quite fearless, righteous, humble, resourceful, faithful, and indeed uh, uh, one who was outstanding in all of the things that he did. We know that Jesus, when he was doing these wonderful miracles, um, stated something quite amazing in Jerusalem. Jesus did not trust them, for he knew all men. It's amazing Jesus didn't trust them. They were followers. Yet he knew that they would all fall away and he knew that they couldn't be trusted. All they wanted was the miracles and all the good things that Christ did. They didn't want to take any pain or anything with them or any persecution or suffer anything because they were followers of Christ. All they wanted was all the good things. There's a lot of people like that. He knew that they would follow him until they found out um, what was ahead of them. They did not want what he wanted. They did not want the path that he wanted. And his ideals were certainly not theirs either. And when it was time uh, for them to be crucified, Jesus retired uh, so that he retired into the wilderness for eight months. Now he spent quite a lot of time in the villages uh, speaking with the people. He spent some time also preaching and speaking from house to house in the wilderness. We don't have a recorded message regarding to a lot of the events that took place in the wilderness for eight months where the Lord was. But with his disciples, he retired in a sense from public life. 
but he was still active as the saviour, just that we don't have record of it as he spent time with the farmers there. We know that he was a gracious man, but a lot of people do believe that the, the reason why they retired there was uh, because of the fishing season. And we know that John had returned back to Galilee to continue his fishing. So therefore, that is one of the reasons why people believe that this was a period of time for it. Because the first three years of his life was about, it was peaceful and obscurity, the second part was trouble, eh, well, stress and storm, and then the third part was trouble and danger and death. Jesus loved the country with his friends, and he had many friends all over. But that did not matter where people were very hospitable to him, because they, he, he had nothing. He had no money, he had nothing. But the Lord was with them, and his needs were being supplied. The blind, the poor, the lonely people, he was there for each one. There was no hurry. Jesus always leaves that impression. He's a very unhurried worker. He does things in his time, and it's always the right time. To render the simple message of the word was what his purpose was to come to earth. Not to make things complicated, but to give the simple message of the gospel, which was important. And then shortly we find ourselves in the neighborhood of John the Baptist, who was indeed a great preacher. Now some would have been of the impression that his work was done when he baptized Jesus in the Jordan. And with that baptism of making that proclamation that he was the Lamb of God who was to take away the sin of the world, there was also the three witnesses from heaven, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, and the Spirit descended in the form of a dove unto Jesus as he was baptized in the Jordan. Possible his mission was done, but he only waited for the signal to retire and a sign to see the people following Jesus. As John waits the signal, it comes sooner than he expected, because Herod and the Pharisees saw to that. It's not always the way we think. The enemy can come from different sides and unexpected ways. Meanwhile, he goes on preaching righteousness, but John's mission goes on, but it's different, much more different, because he was much more sincere, because he had met the Jesus he was preaching about. He had spoke to the Jesus that he was speaking about. He had baptized the Jesus he had been preaching about. He had now an interacting relationship with the Son of Man, and it made all the difference. He knew exactly who he was talking to. His influence was stronger, and he pointed to one greater than himself, to Jesus Christ. Things came to a point for him when he said, My day is over and a brighter day will come. To that I look forward. Amazing to see what he said. I am nobody but a messenger before him. I am but his humble friend and servant. Therefore I rejoice. He must increase and I must decrease. This is my joy. It takes a big man to feel like that. But now we find him in the dungeon, in the black fortress, one on the southern defences of Palestine. It was a place of black lava, rocks, 
looking over the desolate waters of the Dead Sea. It wasn't easy for John the Baptist, who was used to fresh air and used to living in the desert. Now being confined to a dungeon and being indeed restricted in chains, this was very difficult for him. A fitting place to break one's spirit. A man who had dared to say the truth to the Pharisees, to the priests, and also to the king himself, Herod, and called him an adulterer. It was hard for him as he was used to fresh air and great fresh air from heaven. And here he was confined to a dungeon. But this man, while he was there, fell into despair and doubt. He doubted. And he sent a message to the master. Master, seek we another. Are we seeking another? Or are you the son of God? We may find this strange that this great proclaimer doubted in him that he was weakening or lost his faith. Well, it was, he was unworthy of being the herald. That's what he felt. Oh no. The one who thinks this knows little of the psychology of doubt or torture. Of the great soul whose belief was shaken. Sad losses have we all met with. But one said, mine is heavier yet. For a believing heart is gone from us. You can be tested to the very limit. This man was shut up for months in a desert. In this very hot, gloomy climate. John the Baptist was quite a temperamental man. He was a man of moods. And mood swings were the solitude of restraint getting on his nerves, and we can all experience some of that. The deepest uh, religious man could hardly save one's faith, but there are brighter days ahead, even in perplexities, there are expectations of things to happen. And to see his life's dream come through meeting Jesus was something very wonderful. It was very moving to see this great man reduced to a faith that was being tested. But you know what was nice? Jesus understood. If there's one person who can understand us, it's the Lord. He always understands. This Jesus experienced temptation in the wilderness. He knew what challenges was. He knew what was facing danger in life was like. So what does he do? He sends a message back to John the Baptist in prison. And he tells him in the simple way that he would understand in that great witness, the blind receive their sight, the lame are walking, the deaf are hearing, the dead are raised, the poor have good news preached to them. And that gave him some hope. But you know something? I really do hope somebody did tell him what Jesus did actually say. Jesus said, among them that are born of women, there is none greater than John the Baptist. A man in despair and doubt and test and trial. Robbed of everything, persecuted on every side. But Jesus said about him this great testimony. 
But you know if nobody did tell him, Jesus has never already told him because he's in glory with the Lord. Let's go to the Lord with all our doubts. For he understands King Herod surprises him with a visit to prison. And then another day he invites him up to his court to speak to him. Herod was under a lot of conviction because of him. But you know the mother of Herod. Uh, we know that um, she had two sons. And one was a preacher and the other was a tyrant. So you see, if there was, if you see bad in people, there's always a little bit of good. And maybe it's the mother's influence that this good came out of him, where his heart really did care about John uh, the Baptist. It was important to see that he indeed liked this man and uh, Mark tells us uh, there are only two accounts of this event in the scripture one is in Mark and the other is in uh, Matthew it's in Mark chapter 6 and also Matthew chapter 14 we have that account given to us of uh, the death of John the Baptist and uh, it was important that we see how indeed uh, Rhodi is the wife of uh, this Herod was indeed bore hatred to John the Baptist because he found John the Baptist found her out and found out the fake and the falseness that was about her. You know these things come to light. She might have been a queen, but she hated John with a passion. And she was insulted by him. They say, if no man can love as a woman can, then no man also can hate as a woman can. And hell hath no fury like a woman's God. But it's equally true to say that men can also have vengeance and can be evil. Too. It's not just women, but in this case, it was this woman who sought to destroy this man with every power that she had. The sin she did, the whole court knew about it. Three months later, it was Herod's birthday. She didn't have to wait very long, did she? And uh, indeed, in all that stately hall and all the music and all the dancing and everything else, Herod was so enjoying the event. And the daughter dancing in front of everyone, he said to her, Now, anything you wish, you can have. Now, did you ever hear the phrase, What do you give somebody who has everything? Because if she was in the palace, she had everything. So she went to ask her mother, what would she ask for? And this was her wonderful opportunity. The head of John the Baptist. She was going to stop at nothing to destroy this man. That's evil to do that to anybody. To try to stop at nothing to destroy people is evil and from the devil and from the pit of hell nothing short of it and that's what she wanted to do and she asked and she said the head of John the Baptist that's sad isn't it and John died a horrific death but his soul is in heaven with the Lord we have to be careful what promises we make, what wishes we want to grant. We should put conditions and think before we say, it cost John the Baptist his life. It can cost us too. But just by the way, this woman brought a bad end in the sense to John the Baptist 
but she came to a bad end. See the wheel turns, and people who do bad come to a bad end, and you read that in the Bible, they come to a bad, bad end in the Lord's time, whether we see it or not, it's in God's hands. And we see here how these things happen. Now she has an eternity to regret what she did. And it's too late. What is done cannot be undone. And God sees and hears all things. This was a man of God who died and who is now in glory with the Lord in heaven and who served his master faithfully and who now enjoys the pleasures of eternal life with the Lord. Well, there are warnings, there are messages, there are encouragements, there are challenges, there are rebukes to learn for each one of us from this chapter. And may we take them with us and think about it and pray about it. And if we are wrong, may God put us right and lead us in the paths of righteousness. Amen. Let us sing in conclusion to the praise of God in hymn number 259. In the cross of Christ I glory towering over the wrecks of time, all the lights of sacred